Hello, Craig Smith from the Home Education Foundation in Palmerston North, New Zealand. And we were talking about how we as parents can educate our children at home, give them a truly solid, for, fully orbed education at home, rather than send them out to some institution hoping they'll get an in education when in fact they're going to get schooling and they're going to get introduced to all sorts of other weird stuff that may not be what you were hoping they'd get. <clears throat> question some people often ask is, right, if I'm going to follow this home education path, how can I prepare my children for tertiary education? Very good question. Well, folks, we've talked to university professors. One guy I remember in particular, with Ph.D. economics at Canterbury University down in Christchurch, New Zealand. And he said very clearly that first year university professors do not expect their students to know anything in particular apart from how to read, write, and do basic numbers. And when I say basic numbers, he was talking about <clears throat> your basic uh, addition and subtraction facts, your multiplication tables, um, and mathematics uh, right through basic algebra. If you know your basic algebra, you'll be set. You don't need to go really anything beyond that. You know, we always, with our six and seven year olds, we're scratching our heads worried about, man, I don't know calculus, I don't know trig. How am I going to teach my six and seven year old calculus, trig? Well, hey, you know, they're only six and seven. Maybe you don't need to worry about calculus and trig right now. And you think, I didn't do so good in chemistry. Well, that's fine. <clears throat> um, you know, maybe your child doesn't need to be a whiz bang in chemistry either. It depends. If the Lord's leading him in that direction, he, your child will probably have a, an innate interest and a desire to find out about that stuff. Once your children can read, write, and do basic math, they can teach themselves anything. And so your, your task as parents to prepare your children for tertiary education is number one, constantly make them self-starters, enthusiastic about learning, enthusiastic about education, self-starters where they know how to go out and when they want to find something out they know how to do the research to locate the books that will teach them or to locate the people who will instruct them in these particular subjects and they'll know how to organize bodies of knowledge into a useful form and um, and to uh, summarize reading into notes. That's probably your best thing. Teach your children how to read so that they read well and comprehend. Now the current New Zealand um, curriculum is just the most ridiculous document you ever want to read. When you and I were at school the whole idea is you would read for comprehension. You thought right here's I'm reading these words on the page. What was it the author who wrote those words what was it the author intended for me to understand thereby? And that's what we understood by reading for comprehension. That idea is pretty well gone out the window. And in the New Zealand curriculum statement, it's unbelievable. You read it, it says, the child is reading to make meaning of the text. And the child makes meaning of the text by bringing his own experiences, his own knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to the text and uh, he looks at the text, he, if he can make out the words, if he sees the picture, if he sees the illustration, and maybe a bit of the context, and who knows what's been going on that week, if he's got indigestion or whatever else, that helps him to make meaning of the text. Well, if it has absolutely nothing to do with what the author intended, well, that's okay, mission accomplished, the child made meaning. Well, that's just nuts, folks. We don't want to follow that idea. <clears throat> we, again, want to help our children to read and comprehend what the author intended to convey. <clears throat> and of course, you want your children also to be discerning readers, so that when they read, maybe they comprehend what the author intended to say, but do they agree with it? Do they see it as a load of hogwash, or is it, or is it something worth taking note of? In other words, your children must be able to um, comprehend the difference between when they're reading fact and fiction, between truth and error, and between good, robust debate uh, or a, a, an honest, balanced critique of a subject, on the one hand, 
if they're reading material or if they're reading something that's nothing but straight out propaganda. You want your children to be able to discern the differences among these various types of genres in their reading. And of course, you want your children to develop good advertising resistance so they know how to say no when they see a spiel on a poster or a television show advertising stuff they can see through all the bull and realize that yeah I'm being sold a bill of goods here I don't need to listen to that and just have the the, the answer is no I'm not going to be sucked into that teach your children that kind of resistance that they understand when they read and reading is also listening they also want to be a good listeners and discerning listeners too so again they can listen to a speech and understand whether they're listening to a good uh, balanced critique of a subject or if they're just listening to a, a tirade of propaganda from a very specific uh, a very specific point of view you know I was at university here at Massey University philosophy of education third year paper and I said to the professor, he asked if there were any questions. I didn't have a question, but I had a comment. And in front of everybody, I said, Sir, with all due respect, all of your reading material, all of your notes, and all of your lectures have been from a very narrow philosophical perspective, and you haven't even given us a clue that there's lots of other ways to understand these ideas. And he went like this, he said, you're you're absolutely right next question and I mean it was just I was dumbfounded my mouth hit the floor this fellow had just admitted that he had been propaganda just feeding us propaganda the whole time and he was shamefaced about it the rest of the class it just went right over their heads they didn't understand what had just happened <clears throat> and uh, but your children don't want to be taken in like that. Mm -hmm. Help them to be good discerning listeners and good discerning readers, but competent and, and to be able to understand what the author of the speech or the, uh, of the writing was intending to convey and then make a judgment call uh, on that as well. <clears throat> and then writing, that's the other thing to prepare your children for university is that they're able to especially write that is summarized notes from a speaker or summarized notes from a, a text summarized notes that are going to help them to know and master the the knowledge and the material that's in there so writing uh, and also to communicate well in an essay form where an essay form is very basic you you write an introduction in which you tell your audience what you're about to tell them and then you have the body of your essay in which you tell them and then you have the summary in which you tell them what you just told them again so if you had three points for example that you wanted to get across you'd mention those three points in your introductory paragraph and then you would have one paragraph in the body for each of those three points so you basically have three big fat paragraphs in your body explaining each of those points and then in the summary, you'd mention each of those three points again and then have a summary statement that kind of ties them all together, a bit of a crunch line, a punch line. It's a very simple format. It's easy to understand how that works. And uh, it does take practice to learn how to do that. But once your young person gets used to writing essays, they start to think like that and they just their thoughts just come out on paper in that format the logic of it jumps out of the page and grabs the professor around the throat he will be very impressed with their writing and if you can learn to speak like that off the, off the hoof that's even better so that's the, that's the way that you can prepare your children for tertiary how to be competent readers and listeners to be competent writers and speakers and to know their mass up through basic algebra they don't have to memorize the periodic table, neither do they have to know um, uh, trigonometry or calculus off pat. That's only if they're going to specialize in certain areas. Thank you very much.